Welcome. Dan, thanks for joining us. I know it's been a very, very busy summer in, in so many fronts, but, but I think, first of all, I would like you to kind of ease fans' concerns that, yeah. that this is a rudderless situation. I mean, you, you're very busy with, with the ball club and, and now with Kobe Altman and a, and a pointed uh, focus of what's come, coming down the road in terms of the future. Yeah, I think that, you know, there's obviously a, a vacuum when, when people don't get answers and hear what they want to hear immediately. And, you know, unfortunately, things have, they take time. They take time. You, you have to figure things out. You have all summer long to do it. Uh, we expect to be competing for championships um, and, and for sure, starting with this year again. And, you know, the, the team has is, is done great. The franchise has done great, obviously, the last three years. Um, and I, we're trying to get better. We're trying to get better in the off season. We made some great moves. Um, among them, Kobe Altman being uh, appointed the new new general manager. And I think that Kobe, uh, hopefully people have seen this in the in the news conference, but you'll see the kind of confidence, the kind of swag, um, the kind of charisma. And this this guy doesn't just have that. He's also got a deep knowledge of basketball, and and he's he's well connected. And he's only like 34 years old. I mean, so I feel like we just sort of drafted a a superstar rookie, you know, if you look at like general managers being in their 30s and 40s or 50s, you know, and athletes are in their, their 20s or NBA 20s and 30s, it's, it's sort of we're down the curve of that. I, that that's how I feel with, with Kobe, and I think that Cleveland's going to fall in love with him, and I think that for the right reasons, because I think he's going he's gonna to do a great job. I really like how Kobe gave uh, David Griffin his just due in the fact that uh, he really groomed this group, mm -hmm. and Kobe, of course, is at the forefront, but what stuck out? for you the most in terms of making him the guy that you knew he was perfect yeah. for this fit? Well, I'll tell you, we, you know, I talked to a lot of uh, candidates and, you know, you heard about the, the Chauncey one was the one that was in the news, but we, we've talked to several others. And I, I think that, you know, there's something about Kobe. There's, you know, sometimes you're interviewing somebody or you get to know them, actually, in this case, because he's been here five or six years. And, you know, they have, they have something sort of special with them and how they can connect with people. But that can't be the only thing they have. They've also got to have, you know, the knowledge and the, the just the deep uh, skill level that you'll need to be a general manager um, in the NBA. And I think that he actually said uh, in the news conference that you know, there was only 30 of these jobs in the mm -hmm. world. And um, and I, I'm just proud that we we have him here and we have him under contract. And I think that I just think he's leading a great group too. The four or five guys that are underneath him. I mean, they, they average something like, you know, seven, eight years or something. They've been here grinding uh, day after day uh, in the back rooms where people don't see him, uh, putting up every scenario known to mankind and, and, and that is mathematically possible as far as, you know, trades and free agency and draft picks. And uh, it's, it's, it's truly, uh, it's remarkable watching all of this. But, but our front office is in, in very good shape right now. Um, I think you've got a team that is, is, has noble purposes, who cares about the mission, and it wants to continue to deliver a competitive team that has, has a chance and right there to win championships. And, and that's what drives LeBron James. We know that. Yeah. that that's how he's wired. Yep. How would you categorize the communication between yourself and the organization with LeBron this summer? Well, I can't speak with everybody in it. I mean, I, I, I text LeBron. He texts back often, and we, we, we've had phone calls this summer so far. I had dinner with him. I mean, you know, we, we are in constant communication. Mm -hmm. Probably... Uh, more and better communication this summer than than ever previously. So, you know, he cares deeply. He, he his, you know, he LeBron is 32 and a half years old. You know, don't ask me to the day, but 32 close. and a half years old, yeah. pretty close. And so, you know, he knows, uh, you know, that you know, nature eventually takes over everybody. So every year right now is very very important to him. So he's focused on this next year, and so are we. And and I think that, you know, we have the ability and the the talent and and the assets. Uh, to field a competitive team that can get through the East and, and, and hopefully uh, give whatever team comes out of the West, assuming it might be that same one, right. um, a run for their money. And, and as fans know, and some tend to forget, that a year ago at this time, mm -hmm. we were all celebrating a championship and basking in the glory of that, yep. and, and know your commitment to this city and to the dollars that it takes. And if anything, that's been ramped up as opposed to being turned back. Yeah, I mean, you can't all of a sudden start to get cheap now. <laughs> right. you're, you're sort of all in, right? We're all in, as, as, as we like to say. And I think that you know, it takes more than that, though, right? It's not automatically that the team you know, spends the most amount of money, pays the most luxury tax, is going to win. Uh, thank God it's like that, because you wouldn't want a league like that. <laughs> and, and I think that um, you know, there, it's, 
it's getting the right team in the front office, and I think that uh, Kobe talked about it with uh, our, or regarding our, our coaching staff and Ty Lue. I mean, Ty Lue is sort of a little bit lost in all of this yeah, this I summer agree. because you don't hear much about Ty Lue. Uh, Ty Lue so far batting 100% um, and getting his teams that he's a head coach to the finals, and he's batting 50% on winning them or not. So not such a bad run for his first two years. Um, but but you know, anybody, you talk to anybody in the league, who watches him and who knows basketball, they think that Ty, Ty Lue is one of the best X and O's guy and, and relationship guys in the entire league. And I think that we have a great future with him as well. He's also young. I mean, we got youth. Yep. You know, you talk about getting younger. It's funny because franchises are always talking about getting younger, getting younger, getting younger. Well, we've done that in our coaching, in our front office, um, and I'm, I'm sure we'll eventually that'll, that'll be happening through the, the team itself. And maybe even the ownership. No, I don't know about that. Maybe or broadcasting, broadcast yeah, right. right. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, it's important. I think you have to have veterans always around, but you also got to have, you know, youth and, and coming up the ranks. And, and that goes for any business, frankly. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Kyrie because obviously you had mm -hmm. the conversations with himself and his agent. I know it's sensitive, mm -hmm. but can you kind of bring us up to date where, where it is and, and where we go moving forward? Well, you know, it's been reported that, that Kyrie, quote unquote, asked for a trade. Now, you know, I met with uh, Kyrie and his agent, Jeff Wexler, several weeks back now, three weeks maybe. Mm -hmm. It's probably three weeks back. And, you know, we met a few of the summers that he's been here, probably four of the six summers or something like that. So this isn't an unusual meeting. And, and we, we talked about several scenarios. I don't think it's uh, appropriate for Fred probably to get into the details of what went on in that conversation. But there was a, there was a wide range of scenarios discussed. Um, right now, Kyrie Irving is, is the starting point guard um, on the Cleveland Cavaliers, and he's got two or three years left on his contract. And so un unless that changes, you know, that's, that's where he is. And so, uh, and we're grateful for him, and we're grateful for the job he's done. And, you know, he's an all-star, and he had, a, he had a shot of a lifetime uh, last year and played well this year again, too. So, you know, it, it, you just play the cards as they, as they come to you. Uh, but I feel good. I feel good about the direction and where we're going. And part of that is Derek Rose. I mean, he, he mm -hmm. could have gone a multitude of places, but yep. wanted to come here because of, A, the culture, the talent, the coaching staff, and the ability to compete for a championship. And as he said, yep. wants to play in meaningful games. Did you get that feedback? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, Derek Rose, first of all, as I, I said in the news conference, too, he's 28 years old. Mm -hmm. He's only 28 years old. Right. It's, just, it's really hard to believe when you get your arms around it uh, because he seems like he's been around for so long. And, and he's 28 years old. He could have also made a lot more money. I mean, there were teams that had cap space that we just couldn't, by the rules, pay. So he came here for a lot less money than he, he would have otherwise gotten. Um, he did average almost 19 points a game last season. In fact, if you look at his, his averages versus his career, they're pretty close on all mm -hmm. fronts, and he probably didn't even get the minutes that he, that he got in previous years. So, you know, not that that t is a be-all, end-all and tells you everything about what, what a player is doing depending on the team they're on, but, you know, at least it's one, one or two indicators. And... He's hungry. I think you, you, in your question, you're referring to that or implying that he's hungry. He's hungry, you know, to win a championship, and there's no better place for him to go than, than here. And obviously, obviously, the depth you've added: Jeff Green, Jose Calderon, <clears throat> Jetty Osman, a, a, yep. a promising rookie. Kyle Korver stays. Do you feel mm -hmm. better about this ball club where it is right now as opposed to say a month ago? Uh, we, I think we're absolutely better. I, there's no question. If you take everything else, hold everything else equal, I don't think we're done. I don't know exactly what that means exactly, but, but it, my gut is we're not done yet. Um, um, but we'll see. Even if we are done, I think, you know, everybody stays healthy, we are definitely better. And, you know, the other thing, and I mentioned this also in the news conference, is that, you know, game three, you know what happened? One there? bucket. Well, we 11-0 we run, right. and, and, you know, we, you know we, we all know what happened there. Um, we win that game, which easily, easily could have and should have gone our way. That's at least a six-game series, probably a seven. So I'm not saying we definitely win the series by any means, but we, we would have been right there. And people, you know, because we lost 4-1 are out there, you know, there's this massive gap of talent between them and us. And, I, you know, I, I'm sorry I'm not buying that the facts don't support that. You know, that doesn't mean we can't and shouldn't try to get better. But, you know, if you just look at it, you know, if you look at, you know, a bucket falling, a free throw falling, you know, we're at the end of the, the series in six or seven. So, and anybody wins. But, but we have to get better. One final point, one of your business-isms is ignore the noise. Mm -hmm. 
hard for you and and Kobe and, and the front office and the team to do that, or is it just that's part of being in the NBA and you've got to be able to keep your nose to the grindstone? Yeah. Well, if you've been following anything in the last uh, week or two, it's not just the NBA that there's noise, uh, at least in my life these days. Um, there's a lot of things that happen. Um, it's sort of the life you choose to live, though, right? You choose a certain position or, right. or, or be a certain business, and that sort of goes with the territory. Um, you know, it, I don't mind when they when they talk about basketball and criticize anything with the NBA or basketball or moves that you make. That's just natural. When when things start to, and this isn't, well, you don't hear this locally, but some couple national guys who are trying to bring attention on themselves start making up stuff about your other business and this and that. That's sort of, that's the only thing that the noise that gets me. Other mm -hmm. than that, you sort of, Ignore it. Okay. Well, thanks for taking the time. Well, thank you. Uh, what's going? Wait, I have to ask you though. This summer, what are you guys? What's your? You know, you're always working on a certain move this <coughs> summer. Like, what are you uh, focused on? You focused on a certain delivery to Austin or a certain? We we talked you know, about that at dinner. We had dinner yeah. uh, two nights ago, as a matter of fact. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're not at liberty right now to say no, what not, what it is. But you're not uh, beefing up any like certain highlight packages. <laughs> or, or 3D kind of, you know, what do you call that one thing? Where you yeah, 3D. Yeah, 3D. Yeah, um, yeah we're always working on that, that stuff. But, but yeah. mainly it's, it's following the greatness of our players on the floor, and that makes our jobs easier. Great. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Dan Gilbert, our guest.